We are back with new Premiere Pro tricks. Today, I'm going to share with you guys 10 editing tricks to boost your creativity to the next level. Let's get started. Trick number one. Over time, Premiere starts accumulating hidden cache files that slow down performance, or sometimes even lead to crashes. One quick way to refresh everything is this. The next time you open Premiere, hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac while clicking on the Premiere icon. This brings up a special window containing four handy options. The first option lets you reset your user preferences, things like interface brightness, layout settings, and overall workspace adjustments. The second option clears your media cache files. These are temporary files Premiere generates during editing, and removing them can noticeably boost speed. If you're facing plugin-related issues, the third option is extremely useful. It wipes the plugin cache data, which often resolves random errors. Finally, if you've added any third-party VST plugins for audio, the fourth option allows you to disable them completely, which can help if those plugins are causing slowdowns or conflicts. Trick number two. Instead of opening a new project every time and spending minutes setting up the same folders and importing the same assets, you can easily avoid all that repetitive work. In Premiere Pro, just prepare your project once, then go to the file menu at the top and click Save as Template. Give it a name, something like New Project Template. Now, whenever you start a fresh project, you can choose this template and instantly get all your folders and assets ready from the start. It's a simple trick, but it saves a huge amount of time. Trick number three. If you use a recorded voice in your edits, this trick will help you make it sound richer, cleaner, and more professional. Like a studio quality voice, here's how the raw voiceover sounds before any editing. Watch closely, just a few simple tweaks, and the sound completely transforms. All right, let's enhance it. Go to the effects panel and search for parametric equalizer. Drag and drop it onto your voiceover clip. Next, open the effect controls, find parametric equalizer, and hit edit. From the preset options, select Loudness Maximizer. Now increase the L, low frequencies a little. This adds warmth and depth to your voice. Then slightly boost the H high frequencies to bring in clarity and crispness. Just make sure not to push it too far. Too much high end can make it sound harsh or thin. Play around with these curves until your voice feels balanced and natural. You can also adjust the gain slightly for extra brightness and definition. Now let's listen to the improved version. Watch closely. Just a few simple tweaks, and the sound completely transforms. And here's a bonus trick to make your voice sound even more polished. After applying the previous effects to your voice, head over to the Effects panel and search for Multiband Compressor. Drag and drop it onto your voice clip. Then go to the Effect Controls panel and click Edit under Multiband Compressor. Here, you'll find several presets. I personally like to use Broadcast, but you can experiment and choose whichever fits your voice best. Once you've selected a preset, click the B button in the limiter section. This helps control your voice levels, preventing them from getting too loud or too quiet. Now, play your audio and adjust the output gain to match your project. I usually keep it between minus five decibels and minus two decibels, but you can fine tune it to your own taste. When you're happy with the sound, you can save this setup as a custom preset for future projects. It'll save you a lot of time later. Now let's listen to the final, even more enhanced version. Watch closely. Just a few simple tweaks, and the sound completely transforms. Trick number four. To quickly tweak a clip's position, scale, or rotation. First, click on the clip in your timeline, then go to the program monitor. In the bottom left corner, you'll find a button called Direct Manipulation. Turn it on. After enabling it, you can move, resize, or rotate your clip directly inside the program monitor without opening the effect controls panel at all. It's a super convenient way to make fast visual adjustments without interrupting your editing flow. Trick number five. If you've got multiple clips on your timeline and you want each of them to be the same length, doing it manually is a pain. For example, let's say you want each clip to be exactly 10 frames long. Normally, you'd move forward 10 frames, press W to cut the rest of the first clip, then repeat the same steps again and again for every single clip. That's way too time consuming. Here's a faster method. Just select all your clips, right click, and choose speed slash duration. Enter the frame length you want, let's say 10 frames, and hit OK. Instantly, every clip will be trimmed to the exact same duration. You might notice gaps left between the clips, but there's a quick fix for that too. Go to the Sequence menu at the top and click Close Gaps. All the spaces will disappear automatically, leaving your clips perfectly aligned. This trick saves a huge amount of time and energy, especially when you're working with a large number of clips. Trick number six. Whenever you need captions, you usually have to manually select each audio clip, go to the text panel, and generate a transcript one by one. Doing this for every clip takes time, and in big projects, it quickly becomes frustrating. But there's a smarter way to automate this. 
Go to Preferences, then click on Media Analysis and Transcription, and enable Automatically Transcribe Clips. Once you turn it on, you'll get two options. One, Auto Transcribe All Imported Clips. This will automatically transcribe every clip as soon as you import it into your project, even if you never use it in the timeline. Two. Auto transcribe only clips in sequence. This option only transcribes clips that are actually added to a sequence. It's more efficient and uses less system resources. I've selected the second option, auto transcribe only clips in sequence. Now, whenever I drag a clip into the timeline, Premiere will automatically start transcribing it in the background. No extra clicks, no manual steps. Trick number seven. When you're working on a video outro and you play back your timeline to check how it looks, you'll notice something frustrating. As soon as the playback reaches the end, Premiere automatically jumps back to the start and begins playing from the beginning again. This can be pretty annoying, especially when you just want to review the last few seconds. You end up having to manually drag the playhead back to the end every single time. But there's a quick way to fix this. Go to the Edit menu at Top Then in Preferences, Open the Timeline section. Look for the option called At Playback End, Return to Beginning when Restarting Playback. Just uncheck this box. Now, when playback ends, it'll simply stop at the last frame, and it won't jump back to the beginning unless you tell it to. This makes reviewing specific parts of your timeline, especially out rows, much more efficient and less frustrating. Trick number eight. If you've set two keyframes on a clip and then shortened that clip, you might notice one of those keyframes seems to disappear. So where does it go, and how can you bring it back? It's actually simple. In the Effects Control Panel, click the Burger menu, the three horizontal lines, and select Pin to Clip. Now, zoom out, and you'll easily spot your missing keyframe. This option lets you freely move keyframes, even if they're placed beyond the clip's visible in and out points on the timeline. Trick number nine. Imagine you're deep into your edit and suddenly spot an empty space on the timeline. Turns out the audio is missing. At this point, you've already done too many edits, so using Control or Command plus Z isn't really an option anymore. Here's the quick fix. Move your playhead over the clip that's missing its audio. This trick works for video clips too. Then press F on your keyboard. That clip will pop open inside the source monitor. From there, just pull the audio track back onto your timeline and finally link it again using Control or Command plus L. And now for the final trick, editing your videos to the beat. Syncing your visuals with the rhythm of your music gives your edit that perfect flow and professional vibe. Start by playing your music track in the timeline and tap the M key on your keyboard every time you hear a beat. This will drop markers along your track, basically mapping out the heartbeat of your edit. Once you've set your markers, it's time to sync your clips. Go to your project panel where all your clips are stored, hover over any clip to preview it and press I to set an in point. That's where the clip will begin when added to the timeline. Then move forward a bit and press O to set an out point. Repeat this for all the clips you want to sync with your music. Next, drag the clips into your sequence in the desired order. Select them all by pressing Ctrl plus A and click the Automate to Sequence button at the bottom. In the pop-up window, set ordering to sort order and placement to markers. This will automatically align each clip perfectly with your beat markers. Finally, hit OK, and just like that, your clips are perfectly synced to the rhythm of your music, giving your edit that dynamic, on-beat energy. That's it for today's video. If you found these tricks helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more Premiere Pro tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one.